Today, we will read about the essence of truth from Srila Naratam Das Thakur, and we continue this verse 56, where we started last week. This is a very, very deep subject. It's uh, clearing how to do my sadhan bhajan. Da -di -da -di. <laughs> it's a very good clearing and for myself I need always every day this clearing the, what is the right uh, process what is the right attitude how can I improve how can I get more intense and more condensed so Srila Narottam Thakur in this uh, subject is e uh, explaining of course, we have heard it a lot of times, but it is always new and fresh because it comes directly from the spiritual plane. The wealth craved for in the stage of sadhana, meaning the direct loving service of Sri Radha Mohan in Braj, yearned for by the sadhaka, will be attained within the Siddha Deha after Prem is attained. This is for sure. Siddha Dehe Tahapai. I will read the verse again. Sadane ye dhana chai Siddha Dehe Tahapai Paka Paka Matra Sevichar Apake Sadana Riti Paki Le Se Prema Bhakti Bhakati Lakshana Tatvasara. This is the essential truth about devotional principles. The treasure I desire as a practitioner, I will get when I attain my spiritual body. It is just a question of being ripe or unripe. The ripe stage is the stage of pure loving devotion. And the unripe stage is the stage of practice. So we see there is no good or bad. It's all win-win. It's always increasing. It's always improving. And uh, we just need to continue that. We need to fa uh, have faith and hope in that. So we have been given Harinam, right? Harinam Prashad Prabhu. We have been given Harinam. We have the holy name. Our Gurudev gave us this treasure. And then slowly, when the time is right and the eagerness is increasing, Gurudev will also give Kama Bija and Kama Gayatri. These mantras are also especially uh, merciful. Because they are like a more focused approach to the persons of the Mahamantra, Radha and Krishna. But not only to them, but also to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Nityananda, to Gadadha, to Advaita, to Shivas, to the whole Panjatatva, to the Navadvip side of our, you know, Gora Leela. And by their mercy, they will also reveal to us and show to us how to go into the Rindavan Leela. And that is the mantras we get from Gurudev. We have the Guru Mantra, we have the mantra, for, uh, the Krishna or Gopal Mantra, and we have the Kamabija Mantra, we have a mantra of Srimad Radhika of Rupa Manjari, of Ananga Manjari, and of Lalita, Saki. So we have all the possibilities to enter into these beautiful, confidential personalities approach. It is like a, for myself, it's an everyday endeavor to again go very personal. In my mind, I put some flowers to their lotus feet sometimes. 
or in my mind I just bow down. There's many possibilities. What is uh, all in the realm of sadhana? And slowly, slowly, Sri Gurudev bestows Siddha Pranali so that the disciple gets knowledge of his distinct relationship with the deity and about the Sri Yugala Upasana, the way how to worship the divine pair. So when Sri Guru is seeing also, disciple is very eager, disciple is very one-pointed and very uh, determined and very loving and full of service, bath, full of the feeling to always engage in divine service. Then Guru will give also the revelation of what he or she perceives through the channel of the mercy of Srimati Radhika. And then it continues. Like first of all, the mantras, you know, it's like getting to know someone. We are a little bit shy. Maybe we, we don't know exactly who they are. But slowly and more and more the relationship will come. And by deeper relationship with Maha Mantra, with our, you know, Vijra Mantras, our, our Diksha Mantras, we will come to a very uh, sweet stage of divine eagerness. And that Baba, and we have discussed last uh, week, this Laulya Mai Bhakti, greedy devotion. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, how do you say, the container is our heart. And we perform it with our senses. For example, the mind is also the king of the senses because the mind is desiring and the mind is making plans for activities or for desires. So when we get these mantras and we are chanting them every day, this means they come into our heart and they become persons. They are already persons, I mean, they are persons. But for myself, I will develop this personal relationship according to my own desire and my own wish. And Gurudev is feeling it. When Gurudev gets the green light from Srimati Radhika, <laughs> so to say, then the channel will open more and more and Gurudev will also, you know, speak more confidential and reveal to us personally and also all together what is our relationship and what is our service, what is the color of my dress, what is my name in my spiritual identity, in my spiritual body. And here Baba says, in this process, the disciple will become acquainted with the name, complexion, age, nature, and the other of the different aspects of his or her Siddha Swarup. And I remember when I was translating uh, the talks of Srila Gurudev Narayan Maharaj, with, uh, at that time, it was already 30 years ago, ISKCON uh, gurus, they want to enter into that, you know, this more confidential information. But at that moment, it was difficult for them. So they needed help. They asked him for help. And in that book that we translated, it's called The Hidden Path of Devotion. It's about the prayers or the revelations of Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, how to enter into Raga Nuga Bhakti, into that spontaneous or let's say more realized Sadhana Bhakti. And, uh, and there he is explaining that the process of Diksha is gradual. We have received the mantras, but we are growing like into this person, 
personal relationships or more realizations about the personalities. Who is Srimati Radhika? Who is Mohan? How are they, you know, connected? How are they Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? How did they, you know, have these desires to come together in this Kali Yuga? How is Krishna learning from Srimati Radhika? How is she the one that gives him all the clues or the openings for Prem? How he becomes the student? All of this, these questions, if I carry them in my heart, by the mercy of Nitai, they will be revealed in the heart. Because Nitai is the Akanda Guru Tattva. He is the all-pervading principle of truth, of divine truth and divine revelation. And we remember that in Chaitanya Chaitamrita, the history or the life biography of Raghunath Das Goswami, he wanted to, so badly to go to Chaitanya. But even once Chaitanya sent him back, he was, you know, he was also having his struggles to come, you know, to his direct service, to his direct dasha. So, and then at one point, he had to go to that meeting where Nitai Nanda was. And Nitai said, who is that thief? You are a thief. You tried to go through uh, to my Chaitanya without me? No way. <laughs> so we cannot uh, be a thief and over jump, you know, some steps. El Nitai is that Akanda Guru Tattva. He is the personification of all teachers in our lives. And he is everywhere. So he is helping us to that goal of Diksha and Divya Gyan. And that is now coming. The meaning of Diksha. I think it's an ever fresh, ever fresh uh, subject, isn't it? The learned knowers of the truth call that initiation ceremony through which all sins are destroyed and divine knowledge is bestowed di Diksha or Devya Jnana. That means transcendental knowledge. So it's not that I get the mantras, I hear the mantras from Gurudev and I immediately am enlightened, right? This depends also on my previous activities, on my samskaras, you know, the impressions in my heart, how far the soul has already practiced bhakti maybe in former lifetimes. Because we know from stories that some devotees, when they get diksha, they have realizations. And, you know, Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, they can see them dancing. But, you know, if I'm not on this platform yet, there's nothing to worry because it is a gradual progress. And Narayan Maharaj said, it comes in stages like from kindergarten to preliminary school, basics, and then we go to college. And then later we have PhDs. And Gurudev always teaches us that the PhD is like Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Radhara Sudhanidhi, Vilapa Kushmanjali. And we are so lucky that sometimes we listen to this PhD classes, but we don't understand not much. But still, the fact that we can listen is already a, a very, very special blessing because all these essential truths, they sink in the consciousness. They sink in slowly, 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 and they are not material. It's not material knowledge that will be, you know, at one point forgotten. No, no. This Divya Gyan, this transcendental knowledge which cannot be experienced with the material senses, it will become alive when I get more and more connected with my spiritual senses and my spiritual self. And until that stage, it is a journey, it is a process, it is a school. 
And so Narayan Maharaj told the listeners to his uh, uh, speaking on Raga Vatma Chantrika, you have entered the school of Diksha. But Diksha or the process of transcendental knowledge coming, you know, into my heart and revealing themselves, it is coming until you have realized Divya Darshan, means eternal Darshan, means eternal forms of yourself and of our beloved Radha Mohan, of our beloved Nitai Gauranga. That is the process of Diksha, and it is uh, a science, as Prabhupada always says, and uh, all the verses of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, they are giving us some hints and some deepened uh, feelings on that. And we hear it by from Gurudev, because now Gurudev has many different students, but he is speaking for all of us. So if I don't get it, if I don't feel I have like a relation to what I hear, that doesn't really matter as long as I drink with my ears. Now Divya Gyan or transcendental knowledge is explained. In Sri Bhakti Sandava, Sri Majiva Goswami gives the following explanation of the words Divya Gyanam. Here the word Divya Gyan refers to knowledge of the empowered mantra being the very form of the Lord. This is what we just uh, hear, that this mantra is a form of the Lord, of the Divine. It's not only some words. Although in the beginning it seems to be like that. Oh my God, so, so many mantras, so many new words, so many lines. I'm already uh, packed with mantras. My mind is already full of mantras. <laughs> but slowly, slowly, by continuing to develop my relation with the mantra, with the personality of Srimati Radhika, of Guru Mandrari, of Rupa Mandrari, of Rati Mandrari. Radhe Suniti. Radhe. Radhe? Yes, yes, Prajeshwari Priya, Radhe. I am um, uh, <laughs> thinking what will happen with us, you know? Guru Dev says, Oh, I don't know any sloka. I haven't read anything. But when you listen to him, you can see he knows everything. He knows where it is and complete. And also you who can talk, I can see you've been, you have done much studying Chaitanya Charitamrita and I, I become ashamed because not even once I I read or studied Chaitanya Charitamrita. So what will happen with us? It means at one point we will have to do it, to dive in, to read, to study. I think listening is also, you know, listening it is also the essence because, yeah, the eagerness is not always there all the time, you know, or the greed. But by listening, uh, it becomes in, you know, becomes more interesting. And I can yes. say for the, this, uh, Chaitanya Chaitamita, yes, I read it, but I am not expert. But Gurudev gives always the main points, like, for example, Adi Lila for the confidential mm. reasons of Lord Chaitanya appearance. So I mainly concentrate on this, what Gurudev gives. And then I, I hear about it from Gurudev or from Vaishnavas. And then I get some eagerness to, to study a little bit more and not study only with the brain, but to feel it. Mm -hmm. How, how Lord Chaitanya really is that form of Radha who is coming to teach Mohan and how they are in these reversed roles, you know, 
He is the student. He is listening. He wants to experience and she is the teacher. She is the object. So, and from that, listening again and again and again, then something comes in my heart and it stays there. That is the platform of Divya Gyan. And mm -hmm. I think it's no necessary to study the whole thing like, oh, I have to study the whole thing. Because if we don't hear the right uh, feelings in, you know, we can also misunderstand, we can come back into old patterns of, you know, tr uh, trying to learn something. But um, that is no problem because uh, it will come, it will come anyway. That is the process that it will, uh, the soul is our soul, you know, it will ripen. And when it gets ripe, then there will be this eagerness, there will be the devotees around myself or the zooms where I can listen, where I can ask questions like you do. And so it's no problem because Gurdiv, you know, he is really like that. He did not study, but you know what is Gurdiv Siddha? He is listening yeah. all the time. So he is showing yeah. us the way. He's listening. He is a crazy listener, you know? Yeah. So I feel Gurdiv is sharing this listening uh, perfections with us. And he always said, listen, listen, listen. He doesn't necessarily say, read, 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 study, study, study. He doesn't check us like a teacher. But by mm. sitting there in his chair for almost like almost 10 years now, you know, it's like amazing. He is just mm. drinking with the ear. So he's giving us uh, the simple example encouragement yeah 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 he is he's you know he, he he is one of you know i mean we all had different teachers that we meet in our lifetime starting with our parents and the school teachers and we know not every teacher is 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 the same all are individual yeah so our good if he is telling or giving us this access through the ears Mm -hmm. And, you know, every day we have two hours of four or six hours of Zoom sometimes. And that mm. is such a treasure. If I can make myself drink, <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Even sometimes I get confused because it's also a lot to drink. I have to swallow. I have to digest. But I, Brajeshwari Priya, I always see you in every Zoom. You are a crazy listener too. <laughs> you follow Gurudev. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it, it doesn't get dry, it gets sweeter and sweeter. <laughs> but if I if I read alone, it's not sweet. That's the point. Yes, because then yes. it's not maybe the same uh, feelings coming, no? No, no. But for okay. example... <laughs> when, no, Radha, I'm happy. I'm happy you are sharing with us. So yeah. nice. <laughs> When I listen, for example, this morning class was so amazing. Yeah. And I just uh, listen. I don't usually share, except when Gora Sundara is asking me something, some English words or so. I listen to Mahatma, I listen to Udavji and Gora Sunna, and sometimes we are lucky, then Gurudev is coming. But then I feel when I am listening, Wow, this point or this sentence or this picture, it, you know, it comes internal pictures coming. And then I, I, I inquire, I say, oh, which verse was it today? Oh, Radha Rasuda Nidhi, verse 15. Then I read it again. And I feel that, yeah, if I read it alone, I would never get the same feelings. But then there maybe was one feeling I got this morning. I share with you, I got a very deep feeling about listening how Shimate Radhika is going to meet Mohan in that dark night. But her body is so shining that she is covering it with this black mask, you know, so <laughs> that the body will be blue. And her sari is blue, and everything is blue. Her bangles are blue. Her veil is blue, everything. And then I was so attracted to feel 
how Swamini is so blue and covering herself because she wants to meet Mohan. So all of this blue is showing her eagerness. And also she has to cover her shiny golden effulgence. And then I feel, wow, this is so exciting. My heart becomes uh, excited, interested. So I read it again. And then I take my mala and then I just, you know, I have this picture in my heart, in my mind, and then again another feeling comes. Wow. So that, you know, I think then I feel this color, this blue color, this blue mask, you know, we know it from Gurudev. He also likes this smell very nicely. This kasturi, no? it's called kasturi. You can get it in Rindavan. So when, mm. when I was, th I was then feeling, ah, who is putting it on her body? It's the Mandris, no? They are putting the whole kasturi on her beautiful golden skin. And then more feelings come. But the feeling come when I listen it and I feel attracted to it. So Gurdiv has given us, us such an easy process how to get this transcendental knowledge. The feelings, this is divine knowledge. If it's only like book knowledge, it doesn't produce any feelings. Book knowledge will produce something like a mental access to some information. Like we learn information in school and that's why we don't like it. We have to press that information inside. But listening with the ears and then feeling when it comes down to the heart from the ears, and then when Gurudev, it pu he puts some more, how do you say, more feelings, you know, by, by, uh, inspiring us to, to meditate about it. Then, oh my God, so many things can come while I just meditate on what I have heard and what has inspired me. And it's completely individual, isn't it? It's no pressure. It's no like you have to do it like this and why don't you learn your lesson? <laughs> no, just come and drink. Drink with the ears and let it sink in. Let the medicine that, that the, you know, Divya Gyan, this transcendental knowledge, uh, come and open your heart for it. So I think we are lucky. You don't have to worry that you don't read whole Chaitanya Chaitamrita or you have no time for it. You know, Gurdiv is already the expertise connoisseur, like the relish of it all. And he just puts it in our ears, in our hearts. And he also lets other devotees, you know, share the feelings that he has. So we can, we can consider ourselves very, very lucky that this transcendental knowledge, it's coming in such a simple and sweet way, like you say. Okay. Don't be discouraged. Always follow your greed. <laughs> and you are also like greedy listener, I feel. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> another point that also Goranga Sundara was making last time that stuck in my heart, he said, when there is an audience and listening very, very deeply, then also the speaker will be uplifted by that concentration, by that eagerness. And things will be said or shared that you never plan, that you never like study. It will just happen because Srimati Radhika or Nitai, they are in our hearts and they are giving this. Gurudev is giving this. And that's why sometimes Gurudev, we always want him to speak, but often nowadays he says, I want to listen to you. You are inspire me. <laughs> he is also very uh, eager to feel what we feel. And like this, it's like a divine ping pong. <laughs> it's like sharing the feelings and coming to that platform where it spontaneously manifests from the heart. Thank you for your question, and um, I okay. hope you you are uh, inspired. Yes, and, yes um, very much, because this uh, <laughs> mind is keep telling me, oh, you're so not educated. 
This is not good because you cannot tell anything uh, because you haven't re read anything, you know, like this. But welcome to the club. Look at our baby, Mahatma Ji, you know. He also didn't read a lot yet, I guess. <laughs> he did not read much. <laughs> he just sits with Gurudev in his room, right, Mahatma? Radhe! You can hear me okay? Yes. Okay, very good. Yes, my dear, my God, you're... 100% right. It's, um, I feel that, I mean, some of the times that the first time I read um, from the Bhagavad Gita, I was like, someone was like, wow, such nice sharing. I was like, this is literally the first time I've ever opened this book and read, like, <laughs> in front of Nola. And so it was just exactly as you're sharing so beautifully, Suniti, our our tradition, our lineage is one of mercy. And so this is our this is this is our beautiful opportunity and gift. We don't necessarily have to be learned scholars in these things. Um, and the only only qualification we need is, is our greed and and this is why I see see all of you and see how beautiful you are all so inspiring and um, logging in from all corners of the world at all hours of the day and connecting to to this beautiful flow because you have the grief for it and it's like it's so so beautiful and so inspiring Yes, and you are the good example for us because see maybe I, I practice, I try to practice for many years Okay, this is my good fortune in this body. I, I uh, make up my mind. I want to have a spiritual life. And I was lucky that my Gurudev picked me up and still is holding me. But see, also, like devotees who didn't come for a long time, not so many 30, 40 years, but even in three or four years, they do big jumps. So we see it happens with all of us. If we are just in this train of love, Sometimes it's called the train of love or Gurudev says just when you enter the plane, you sit and you don't jump out. <laughs> then it will yeah, happen. This, we will reach the goal. This is Gurudev's mercy for sure. I, I, can't, I can't speak to an example. I don't know, but I can, I can definitely say Gurudev, looking, looking at the other around or that are around him that are close to him, like your Gora Sundra and he is he's definitely following Guru Dev is the uh, is, is the way for us. Yes, we are inspiring each other. And in the end, if we come back to our spiritual identities, we are all little girls, eleven, twenty seven. What do you expect? <laughs> they are very also small and childish and they like to play. So if I keep this, then I am in the safe in the safe uh, environment. Yeah. So the Divya Gyan is the knowledge of the empowered mantra being the very form of the Lord and that through it the aspirant will achieve knowledge of his specific relationship of the Lord who is the presiding deity over the mantra. So that is uh, some deep point that actually when we chant our our mantras we are connecting to the personality first to the gorangas you know panchatattva to all the personalities of goralila which is still happening here on this earth planet now to be conscious of that and not to think it's a history to be, you know, aware and attention, to have attention for that. And even if it slips sometimes, not forget and not to lose the hope, we are connected. And even that connection is already all we need. And then we are also connected to the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika, to the lotus feet of Mohan, to all our wonderful, you know, Dasis, 
to Lalita, to Rupa Mandrai, we are connected. And sometimes, of course, the chanting will be more dry and will be automatic. And sometimes the chanting will be full of taste. That is according to our state of consciousness and that we cannot even control, <laughs> even though we try to. <laughs> But also that is mercy flowing through us. So, and he is explaining this Ekadash bath, the different relationship of the sadaka with the mantra devata. So it means we have the general mantras, but also the relationship is coming through Guru Parampara. Like I remember that one time, uh, not so long ago, Gurudev said that uh, in verse 100, I think, of Vilap Kushmanjali, Baba is explaining how we can chant in our aspired Dasi feelings Gopal Mantra. Because all of a sudden we know everything I do, I want to feel it in connection with Srimati Radhika. But how to feel it? How to come to that feeling? I know it as a knowledge, but how to feel it? So in that way that uh, Baba says, when we chant Krishnaya, then we feel, oh my God, my Swamini is attracted to Krishna. How can I serve her? Govindaya, because Govinda is pleasing all of her senses. How can I arrange that they meet? Or where can I meditate on this more? That I am for this purpose. And Gopi Janavalabhaya, he is, you know, the beloved of my Gopi, of my Shimati Radhika. So like this, uh, step by step, I come closer to the deeper meditations in the mantra and I have a lot of help in this. And then the other day we had this beautiful month, uh, verse 80 of Vilapa Kushmanjali where it was about the flute stealing and the chess playing. So here we have in the Lila the practical approach of uh, all these mantras. And that is important to fill up the mantras, the words in my heart, you know. They are already non-different from Radha Mohan, from Shimati Radhika, from Ananga Mandri, from Rupa Mandri. But I, I have to, you know, for myself, I have to be ready for my container of my heart to be open for that so I can receive it more and internalize it. That for myself is the sadhana. To internalize the Divya Gyan and to make myself, um, uh, you know, to open myself for it, to make myself a receiver, to catch the right, uh, how do you say that, vibration. Eh? That is my sadhana. And when I'm feeling that I'm out of the vibration, then I just pray that it comes back and I do. Whatever I feel will help me to come back into that vibration, to open up for transcendental feelings, transcendental relations, and transcendental perception. And uh, he, Baba is quoting some verses of other Puranas of descriptions of how the practitioners who have taken shelter of the Madhuraras and who know the principle of Krishna Ras meditate on the Siddha Deha which is suitably or suitable for mentally rendered devotional service. And he's quoting Na Devo Devam Archayat Devo Bhutva Devam Yajat. In other words, unless the sadaka is a god, he cannot worship Godhead. And being himself a god, he can worship Godhead. So that is actually the process of connection to the divine. And the more we become uh, transcendentalized or spiritualized, also the material body will not be even uh, material. It will be 
uh, permeated by spiritual consciousness. And that's what we see in our Gurudev, right? And in all Param Gurudev, that their body was permeated by spiritual consciousness. And thus they are becoming ageless. Not only that, but they become younger. They are shining, their spiritual bodies is shining even through their so-called human existence. And that is inspiring because that's why we are so attracted to them also. Something is shining through them, some personality, some Darcy, some Mandri, that is helping me also to remember who I am. And they have given me that divine knowledge and they are inviting me. Like we have also this word Divya Gyanam in our Guru Vandana. Divya Gyan Rede Prakashito, Na Shri Guru Chara Na Padma. He's giving that Divya Gyanam Rede Prakashito into my heart. And that process or that uh, gift, the transcendental divine gift, is going on. But only sometimes I switch it off. <laughs> I switch off the channel. I don't connect so nicely as I could. And that we all know. We all have this. Like Gurdjieff says, we are pressing the button of our uh, body again, pressing, you know, these buttons. And then the, the divine switch sometimes feels like, oh my God, ah, I have to switch it on again. <laughs> and Gurudev, he knows exactly uh, where we are, at what stage we are. So there's nothing to hide, actually. But always praying for the mercy to, to switch, to be, you know, switched on, to, read, to be ready to receive and to develop my own divine... Uh, attention, awareness. Because like Udavaji always says, we are already that. And I know many are, are, are stressing it. It's already true. We are already that, but I'm not connected to that. How far am I switched on? How far is it uh, going through my whole existence? How far am I continuously aware of my uh, Seva Bhava, of my Bhava Deha? of these feelings that come when I am in that right feeling or mood or connection. So Baba says, the Sadaka is a god unless the Sadaka, unless. So if I'm still thinking and behaving so much like a a uh, human being in my full ego, in my full you know, identity, then I'm not a god. <laughs> I'm walking into that process to become godlike or saintly. You cannot worship Godhead. means the more I realize my own spiritual identity, I can worship, I can connect. And being himself a god, he can worship Godhead. This actually is a is a uh, process. It's called Bhuta Shudi. That is in all spiritual traditions. It's the process of how to connect with the divine and to spiritualize or my senses and to become myself more and more divine channel of love. These scriptural statements of rule and prohibition, also rule and regulation, firmly establish this need for the bhakta who wants to do the service of the Lord and to do bhajan while thinking of himself as a personal associate of the Lord. So that is again the hint, <laughs> the proof. <laughs> that is the art. And to always connect with it, it's really my personal challenge. 
How can I connect? What will be, you know, my drive? What will be my inspiration? I got this knowledge. I got the mantras. I got the guru. I got the mercy in a certain extent. But how every day I can um, connect? And like I said this morning, it was for me when I feel that Shrimati Radhika is going out to meet Mohan and she is in all in blue because she is ready to meet him. She is eager to meet him. And even her body, her golden limbs, she has covered in this dark uh, kasturi oil. And who has covered this? The mandris. And there I am. Wow. Let me try to meditate how I can massage Shimati Radhika with that blackish, bluish oil. How can I cover her skin before we go out to meet Mohan? This was my meditation. I'm just giving a practical example because I'm a very practical person, maybe sometimes too talkative. <laughs> But what the heck? I have nothing to hide. So I try to connect where my heart feels a pling, you know, that pling. Every artist knows that pling. Every musician knows that pling. Every poet knows that pling. It's the connection of love. It's the connection of the spark of the soul in the heart. Where do I feel it? How can I pray for it when I don't feel connected, when I feel dry? But listening, like we heard, is the key. Gurudev is giving us the key. Listening is so powerful. Of course, I will not always have the same taste for everything I listen. But let me be a seeker. Oh, where is the, where is the nectar? Let me be open to listen where I feel resonance, where I feel the same vibration, where I feel, oh, my heart is uh, vibrating. My heart becomes, you know, open, wide and soft by hearing this kata, this, this uh, song and this uh, kirtan. And then praying, praying. Can I connect somehow to my, you know, spiritual self, to my soul, in which way ever it will be possible in my little baby endeavors? Please help me, Gurudev. Please give me a drop of mercy. And once I remember Srila Prabhupada also, the disciples, they came to Srila Prabhupada How can we be Krishna conscious? How can we be Krishna conscious? All day long we try to be Krishna conscious. And sometimes devotees get stressed out, you know, trying to be even or Krishna or Radha conscious, whatever, you know. Sometimes we become stressed out because sometimes I know I sit down and I think, should I start to cook now? Or should I uh, go to the altar now? Or should I take my mala? You know, there's many possibilities <laughs> all the time. We have many, many possibilities. We are rich. We are very rich. What needs to be done sometimes is also given, but sometimes we are also free to choose. And that can make us sometimes also a little bit of nervous. How can I, you know, choose? And then Srila Prabhupada said so nicely to that devotee, Ah, don't worry. If you only once in the day, if you share with someone about the beautiful qualities of the Divine Lord, that is already so much. And then I, when I remember this, when this comes in my heart, then I feel, don't stress yourself, Suniti. Just try to be normal. <laughs> and I remember Gurudev. He says always, become normal. <laughs> become just a normal person and don't stress yourself trying to be a god overnight or godly overnight. <laughs> no, we are just normal, small persons in this world. And we are lucky to hear very high-quality Qatar 
very high quality. And then he says, in the Siddha Pranali that is received from the lotus feet of Sri Guru within the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, the acquaintance with this body is attained. No one should consider this to be imaginative. It is real and eternal. On the strength of his meditation, Sri Gurudev is aware of this and is conferring the proper Siddha Deha to the disciple. So we should also cherish the gifts that we have gotten or that are coming our way and have the, the right um, attitude, have the right feelings to be very thankful and to have a faith in that. And I know sometimes devotees, they, I know other devotees, they say, ah, oh, the Siddha Pranali is not, you know, it's just like an encouragement until you realize who you are. It's just like a, how do you say that? Like a, you know, like a step in between to have something to meditate on. No, Baba says it is eternal and real. And I feel that um, without this, it would be so hard to imagine anything because I would always be so scared to imagine. Because many, many years in my bhakti, uh, it was always said, don't imagine, don't speculate. It was so much stress that... Uh, I would not, I would become stiff, you know, because I would think that everything I do would be wrong and all would be wrong. <laughs> but there comes Gurudev and he says, you have to imagine. <laughs> so, you see, it's always two sides to the coin. So we have to be, you know, completely... Uh, convinced that this is right and real. And for myself, I know that the given form and name, and I will, I am growing into that. I'm growing into that. It's like a baby. I used to be also in a baby form. Now I'm grown up, so called grown up. Now we have to develop again back to the baby form, <laughs> spiritually. <laughs> so we are going through all these phases, and it's uh, completely good, and it's completely real. And I'm so happy because for myself, um, if I would, I have no so I have no samskaras to realize myself. I have only what a desire. But if Gurudev can see me as I am, then I'm so thankful that he opens that to me. I'm very thankful for that. Because that gives me hope, it gives me strength, and it gives me uh, eternal connection. Ah, uh, up to the time I'm using it. And there's also other examples. It's because these doubts of my friends they say, yeah, I know many devotees. They go to the Babaji's and they get this Siddha Deha and that Siddha Deha. So how come that all these Siddha Dehas are different? <laughs> and Gurudev also clear us on this point. He said, once you get it from a real, realized Siddha, but you don't practice it, you lose it. It's like a channel. And if you don't practice that channel, if you don't use that channel, you will, you know, you have to start over again, maybe in your next life, or you go, you know, whenever, 20 years later, to another guru, because even your guru, he cannot give you that same channel again. You get the channel, and it's it's done. Now we have to live in this channel. We have to practice and always, you know, Try to go into that channel and develop my spiritual divine 
channel or form that Gurudev has opened and revealed to me. So it makes sense, right? But once you cut it, then you have to find a ne again like one Gurudev who is giving you another channel and who has realized. It's a very interesting subject that this channel that we are getting and the connection we are getting is alive as long as I practice it, as long as I connect to it. It's eternal, yes. But if I don't practice it, if I cut it, and if I make any kind of like non-loving approach, because I think it's cheap and it's not true, then the result will be a lot of confusion and a lot of uh, misunderstanding. That is also possible. So, but while the sadaka Oh no, here it says, On the strength of his meditation, Shiguru Dev is aware of this, of the spiritual channel, the spiritual form that Shimati Radhika has given and is conferring the proper Siddha Deha to the disciple. While the Sadaka performs his sadhana, his practical meditations, he establishes his self-esteem into this form. I'm growing into it, you know. Like this body, I was growing into it. When I was a baby, I didn't know that this body would be like this now. But I was in the baby form. So now we also, we have this body, like a human body, but we are growing into the spiritual body by our meditations, by our prayers, by our eagerness. And when the perfection comes, when the ripeness is there, when there is some, you know, more mercy is, you know, collecting mercy, then he is blessed or she is blessed with direct devotional service within this body. Wow. So, and he is also speaking about the flow, gati, and Baba is explaining. <clears throat> oh, one of the meanings of the word gati is flow. Just as the mandakini or the Ganga constantly flows towards the ocean and will not stop unless and until it reaches the ocean, similarly, the Mandakini flow of Sadhana Bhakti constantly flows towards the ocean of Prema Bhakti. Bah, this is a flow of Bhakti. Although its fruits are compared with ripe or unripe stages, it's a comparison. Still, the thirst, not the Thirst, the desire for Prema Bhakti remains constantly awake within the heart of the Sadaka and thus constantly awakening the tendency within him or her that leads him towards the kingdom of Prem. My God, I have to look. I can't see. <coughs> Oops, okay. Jai Jai Shri Radhe. It's one hour, my dears. One hour is like nothing. <laughs> but I'm also happy and lucky that I have some friends here who help me to share and care and go deeply. Thank you all. And now we go into our Kitan mode. Kitan. And uh, thank you for your being, the wonderful souls you are, and helping me to also grow and flow in the flow of Prema until we reach the Rasasar, <laughs> the service to our beloved Swamini. Who is Thank the... you so much, Suniti. You <laughs> help us so much. 
Thank you for everything.